Hello there, this is Stefano, and this is a short video about a paper I wrote with Ricardo and Jonas. The paper is titled How to Reference a Digital Game, and it's going to be presented, or rather, if you're watching this video after August, was presented at uh, the DIGRA 2019 conference in Kyoto, Japan. Um, the presentation is only 20 minutes long, and so we will not capture all aspects of the paper. Uh, it's more like an interesting, hopefully interesting video that encourages you to read the paper itself, which you can find in the description of this video. Um, you need to know that before uh, watching this video that uh, during the presentation of this paper, I walked into uh, the talk with a cup of coffee that, got, that I got from the conference catering. I am complaining about the quality of the coffee, or maybe complimenting the coffee. I don't really know what that coffee will taste like. But I will be just asking the audience, if, really, do they know who made this coffee? Who's responsible for my satisfaction or dissatisfaction, apart from, of course, myself and my taste? Shall I blame Digra for picking, say, um, low-quality catering that cannot make coffee in Japan? or? even the Ritsumeikan University who's hosting the um, event. Or shall I be more pragmatic and maybe blame the guy who is making the coffee just outside of this conference hall? Is he not capable? I mean, is he at fault for making bad coffee? Let's suppose it's bad. Or shall we go even more general and blame the person who maybe bought the beans or toasted the beans or chose the uh, roastery where the beans were going to be to toasted. Um, so whom should I blame for the quality of this coffee? Who made this coffee? Uh, are we also to talk about the sort of the technology involved, like whoever bought the machines or are maintaining the machines with which this coffee is made? And if we push this far enough, authorship over this cup of coffee can be ultimately, ultimately even be attributed to the Yemenite traders who originally popularized the beverage. I think it is quite obvious that the quality of the coffee that we drink as game scholars is a crucial aspect of our professional life. And so it makes sense that we could wonder who made our coffee, who is responsible for it. Perhaps even more interestingly, as game scholars, we could apply the same perspective, the same tools that of um, distributed authorship, or just recognizing how messy authorship is as a notion, to, well, video games, right? So the question could be, who made our video games? And who are responsible for uh, our satisfaction and dissatisfactions with them? Who are the authors of a digital game? Is it the creative director guiding the vision of the game? The lead designers who are responsible for putting the systems together. The technical directors are responsible for its technologies and technological parts. But we could extend this range of who is responsible for its contents and quality to a number of other professional figures. And it's very hard to pinpoint who exactly is responsible or who could be uh, pointed at when we say this person made it. In a way, like, technically speaking, all of them made it, right? Authorship is a culturally constructed category, and it's deeply ideological and fraught with issues of power. Indeed, like figuring out or attributing authorship to an object, in a way is constitutive to that object, and so it has like a, a relevant um, constructive power in relation to that object as a social object. Similarly, the decisions that scholars take in referencing games and digital games contribute to constituting games as a certain something, as maybe a creative object, maybe as an educational tool, maybe as an element of culture, uh, a piece of art, an addictive substance, and so on and so forth. Our question of how to properly reference digital games, originally started with a reflection on game authorship. But it soon became a much more complicated issue, um, which touched upon several aspects of, or maybe several disciplines that in a way converge and contribute to game studies. 
Um, in this paper, we will be looking not only at authorship, which is in itself a messy topic, but also at the historical tradition of how we've been referencing games and why, and to the properly game studies, so to speak, like more narrowly focused game studies perspective um, to game referencing. In this sense, like it, one person was not enough to write this paper, and so um, I took care of the philosophy of technology part. Ricardo on the left hand side um, took care of the media theory or um, uh, media history uh, part, whereas Jonas uh, Linderon on the right hand side was crucially responsible for the strictly speaking game studies component. Now, before we get into this three partition and how these components of this paper work together, uh, it's, it might be interesting to, to point out why we decide to focus um, our inquiry on digital games and not on games in general, such as, I don't know, board games, sports, social games, card games, you name it. So why digital games in particular? Well, the first point as to why we chose digital games is that many cultural forms converge in the creation of digital games, which make their framing problem, so what is a game, particularly awkward in the case of digital games, and thus particularly interesting for us. Um, for going back to the notion of authorship, several people and technical components are commonly involved in the development of a digital game. So where do we stop? with authorship and what's the role of technical development and technological parts in that um, attribution and number three they are technically instable objects these digital games always suffered from rapid technological obsolescence and nowadays they're often patched and updated so can we actually reach a digital game is it actually playable now does it have a lifespan and when it's patched or updated, is it still the same game or does it need to be recognized as a different entity? It's always funny for me to think that, for example, we can still read Plato's books uh, 2,500 years after they were written. But, for example, we cannot play some uh, two years or three years, maybe six years um, old uh, iOS apps because the technical environment in which they can be played change and keeps changing quite rapidly. As I was saying in the introduction to this talk, um, the paper is quite intricate and long, so I cannot hope to make it justice in um, just the 20 minutes that I have for this video. So yeah, it's a 60 page, 16 pages long uh, work and it's rich with topics and tangents, so um, I will not be touching on many many aspects of this very rich paper i cannot emphasize it enough if this is important or interesting to you go read it so instead i will try to give you like a quick breakdown of what it contains in the main chunks and then maybe give you an answer to the question that the paper itself poses how are we to reference a digital game in a way that makes sense so the paper is divided into roughly three sections, how uh, referencing contributed to the conceptual framing of digital games as social, social objects, that takes a chiefly game studies perspective. A second part that, gives, uh, that takes a specific focus, and that is on the problem of authorship and attribution, which chiefly takes a philosophy of technology approach. And uh, last but not least, a historical trajectory of how we have been referencing digital games and games in general until now, um, which takes a media history uh, angle, which was mostly pursued by Ricardo. And so, allow me to repeat it, that if you're interested in those analytical bits, you can definitely go and read the paper. They are extensive and thoroughly researched. However, I suppose that for most people who are watching this video or came to my presentation, um, what you're really interested in is what the title is offering, meaning a practical, concrete takeaway as to how to do scholarship well when you're referencing digital games in particular. I cannot emphasize enough that this is a question that has not been asked very often, if ever. When we game scholars focus on matters of constitution of uh, digital games, we talk about game definitions or um, ways to understand what a game is, right? 
but referencing digital games is also an activity that participates in that um, constitutive um, set of activities that we do as as um, scholars. So by referencing games in particular ways, we also make implicit arguments about how we view video games or what we think video, what we think video games should be. So here are our answers. So take this to begin with. Um, while researching uh, for this paper, we figured out that writing styles such as MLA and APA currently offer clear recommendation on, an, on how to deal with a number of different sources, including blog posts, tweets, replies to tweets, online videos, and even forum comments. But none of them uh, give clear indication as to how to reference a digital game. And we do not know why. It could be because they could not find an agreement. Um, maybe they realize it's a messy task in which many different disciplines and uh, expressive forms converge. Or maybe because they just didn't want to impose a conceptual frame on whoever um, wanted to uh, quote or reference or cite or, re or indicate the, a particular aspect of a digital game. However, this puts us in a difficult position because we do not know how to deal with the problem. And digital games, not only in game studies, but also in a number of other fields such as theater studies or computer science, are things that we uh, have a definite interest in quoting, right? And so without fixed standards or stylistic guidelines, scholars tend to freely approach the issue of referencing um, in a way that mostly depend on two different things. One, uh, the field that they're coming from, uh, so normally they might um, mimic uh, the way in which they cite other sources that is common in their field, or what is rhetorically convenient to represent a game as in the paper in question, right? So there, the scholars might be taking decisions that are either based on tradition or arbitrary. And there's another aspect that we didn't even mention until now, which is whether digital games should be cited apart from textual sources or together with all other kinds of sources, including, I don't know, video, blog posts, and so on and so forth. Hang on, because we are going to try to address all of that at once. As part of the problem of deciding how to cite a video game, uh, recommended citation formats in books and journals are usually awkward and poorly informative. I'm going to present two examples here, the first one being um, gamestudies.org. Gamestudies.org insists in having a release city and country and played month, day and year as important information in the citation. However, as we figured out, in the global market and with developers working internationally, it's hard to pinpoint a release city and the decision to quote a date in which the game was played does not normally correspond to the version of the piece of software, at least not in the current market meaning that those two information are, in a way, as I was saying, awkward and poorly informative. As you could see also in the example that they provide, uh, those two uh, indications are actually missing, which is telling, don't you think? The second example that we want to discuss is a little better than the previous one, and it's actually Digra's uh, submission guidelines uh, suggestion on how to reference digital games. It introduces two um, elements that were not present in the previous one, namely the version of the piece of software instead of the date, and a publisher as a relevant figure. The example provided talks about uh, World of Warcraft Cataclysm, uh, released in 2011. Now, in the face of the, let's say, poorly informative and in a way, arguably bad ways which we have to currently reference digital games, we provided in this paper several um, words of advice or several recommendations as to how to do this better, probably. We hope. The first one of, among these being that we suggest to group digital games with books, films, and other uh, academic sources such as articles and books, as this will likely, as explained in the paper, not downplay the cultural status of games.
Our second recommendation uh, has some analogies with how we relate to films. APA and MLA as style guides currently recommend to separate large corporate production from small independent ones when it comes to referencing films. So we similarly decided to propose a dual canon. Um, so two possible ways of understanding and referencing a digital game in which the scholar in question can discretionally, and I repeat discretionally, make the following decision about what the game he or she is examining is. Is it a work of authorship, in which authorship can clearly be attributed? The object game can be considered to be like the um, expressive outcome of a particular singular authorial vision? Or the authorship is distributed in this work, and it can be considered to be a coming together of multiple points of view and approaches, which is very much the case uh, in uh, many popular co commercial games, right? Let me make you a few examples. Super Mario, um, in this case Super Mario Odyssey, is a, let's say, the latest installment in a franchise which is that of Super Mario. It is a new game indeed and has new challenges and new ways of interacting, but largely builds on a tradition and a set of expectations in terms of content, mechanics, duration, and so on and so forth. So we could indicate, for example, the creative director for this game, which is not Shigeru Miyamoto, the original creator of Mario, as the author of the game. But it would perhaps not make a justice to the immense tradition that contributed to make um, Super Mario Odyssey what it is, let alone the huge amount of people who contributed to the level design, to the um, system design, and so on and so forth. So this is clearly a collective effort that builds on a long tradition. So it's hard for me to understand Super Mario Odyssey as a work of authorial intention and authorial expression. It is perhaps easier for me to understand The Witness as, I don't know, the small focused game that responds to the vision of a particular author who take, took responsibility over every design aspect built on the tradition of its own sort of um, design style and uh, design sensitivity. And, well, what I'm trying to say here is that perhaps The Witness can be seen as the work of Jonathan Blow rather than the work of his team, where his team could, could be understood as working for and on his vision. Right. So on the left hand side, we have a case of what can be discretionally. Again, there's no science behind it. It's how I feel as a scholar that is perhaps the work of a multitude of people with a multitude of perspectives on what Super Mario is and could be. And on the right hand side, instead, the definite uh, expression of a single uh, individual. Of course, none of them are particularly true as points of view. But in terms of characterizing games, I think this is um, clarifying my position. So we now uh, provide a recommendation on how to reference a digital game which has recognizable authorship, like the case of The Witness that we just saw. In this case, we recommend that the author takes the most important role, followed by version and year, and followed still by the year of the original release, if different from the version that we're currently referencing. It's similar, it's very similar to how you do it with books, right? Like in which you mention the original release date of, of a book, if it's not the one that you're currently um, referencing. Then the title, uh, the platform, and digital game developed by developer and published by publisher. An additional note about the way of referencing here is that the figure of author, publisher, and developer um, are treated as three separate entities. Below you see an example of how we would recommend that you reference precisely the witness.
We now move to digital games of distributed authorship. So uh, works that in which authorship cannot be uh, directly and clearly identified uh, in one single person. Um, you will see that in this case, uh, the reference style that we recommend is very, very similar to the previous case, that of um, authorship, so to speak. But you will see that the various figures that are uh, responsible and mentioned in this reference style are in a way slightly different, or rather in a slightly different order. You see, for example, that in the case of distributed authorship, the developer takes the, say, driving seat, followed by version year, year of original release, if different, and the title, the platform, digital game directed by director. In this case here, being a work of distributed authorship, we consider that director or the figure of the creative director would be a good substitute for what the author was in the previous example. So instead of being somebody who creates and maintains the vision, um, in general, the creative director is somebody who manages the vision in a larger team. And I'm talking about the creative vision here. And last but not least, um, the game is published by name of the publisher. You might see our scholarly ideology surfacing here in the fact that the publisher remain, uh, remains always the last name in the citation um, that we recommend, in the citation style that we recommend. Below you find an example of what we would like to see uh, in the case of a distributed authorship computer game. And last but not least, should the scholars need to reference a specific professional figure or figures in relation to a component of the digital game in question, we recommend the uses um, of in extended inline citations. What do we, we mean by that? If we want to reference a particular figure or to attribute a particular work to um, a figure in the team in particular, then we can use the following way. So, uh, for example, here we could attribute the writing for the cinematic sequences of World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade to Chris Madsen as follows. Madsen C in Blizzard Entertainment version 2.4.1 2008. So what we do is almost citing like the author of a book chapter within a larger book production, right? So in a way that it has an analogy with book production and it allows us to mention a particular work or a particular figure without having to break our recommended citation style. And this wraps up our 20 minutes, so more or less presentation about how to reference a digital game. And uh, we hope that we got you curious to read a paper, both in its analytical components and in the actual recommendation to, in a way, try to reach a better standard or maybe like a more univocal standard for um, citation in game scholarship. Thank you very much from the three of us. And I hope, again, you enjoyed this. Ciao.